Hi friends, welcome back and welcome to the Sweet November Stamps Fiendishly Fun Halloween YouTube Hop. We are going to be giving away a chance to win the entire collection of 13 fabulous Halloween new stamp sets. And to play along, all you have to do is visit each YouTube account listed down in the description box below, subscribe to each channel, like each video, and leave a comment. You have four days to watch all 10 videos and hop along and all of the other details for the hop are down in the description box as well, all of the rules. So make sure that you go down there and check it out. But we are going to be creating with the Halloween is back stamp set, which is brand new from Sweet November stamps. And today I'm going to be making more of a decor piece, but the same things could be done to a card. No problem. I'll also be using some of these etc pieces from Tim Holtz, this Lawn Fawn stencil, and then the new black texture paste from um, the Ranger Distress line. So we're going to be starting out by building this little sign um, on one of these smaller etc panels. I also bought these tiles and you're supposed to use the squares of these, but we're actually going to use this frame piece that's left over when you take the squares out. And I'm going to be using that to pop up my door frame because as you'll see here in a second, it fits perfectly around this door. So <laughs> this could also, like I said, be done to a card base. You could let it be 3D if you wanted to layer some cardstock or a um, piece of like chipboard like this behind it. You could also just adhere it flat and just kind of give the look and dimension of a 3D door without actually having to have it be popped up. You could do foam, you can do whatever works for you. So I'm taking a piece of this honeybee paper and this is an instance of do as I say and not as I do because I am using tape runner to hold this down but once I add my stenciling the paper curled up and I had to go in with liquid glue so if I could do this over again I would just use a bunch of tacky glue to start with and then I wouldn't have had to go back and make any adjustments once I had that cut off I used an exacto knife for that I didn't couldn't find my cutting mat so it was a little dangerous I decided to not scar anybody with that footage um, I didn't get hurt or anything, but I can't recommend you doing it the way I did. So <laughs> I inked and distressed up the edges of my board. I trimmed down a piece of plain black cardstock to go on the back of my door frame. This is what you're going to see kind of peeking through the door. And I'm just using scissors, just my regular, not like my fussy cutting scissors, but just regular craft scissors to cut through the etc frame and it worked really well so I close that frame so that it goes all the way around and then I'm going in with that black texture paste and a palette knife and just creating a nice even layer over top of this lawn fawn brick stencil I can tell you uh, that I'm going through this front sign part really quickly, but it's because I wanted to really focus my video on the coloring and the Copic coloring and the stamp set. So if this kind of decor piece is not for you, by all means, like skip a little bit ahead or just hold out because I promise the whole video is not the multimedia stuff. It's really the coloring. Um, I did seal up my texture paste with some press and seal right in there so that the air doesn't get to it and start to thicken it up. And then I got my three little trick-or-treaters in place. I went with the Frankenstein, the witch, and the sweet little pumpkin. She's so cute. She just gives very toddler vibes to me. So I stamped them up and I also stamped out my door with my Honeybee Stamps Intense Black Ink. This is my go-to Copic coloring friendly ink right now, the Be Creative ink. I love it. And here we go. Now things will slow down just a little bit and we will dive into this coloring. So uh, for my pumpkin, I definitely had that feeling of those little toddler costumes that you always see kids dressed up as pumpkins every year. At least I feel like I do. Um, and they're just like those really cute kind of sack costumes <laughs> where you know your your little kid is going to be able to stay warm and cozy and keep up with the big kids. Um, and they're always just like a true bright orange. So I'm going in with my orange Copics, kind of coloring this in, still giving some nice dimension where that stitching would kind of be creating those different like ripples and texture in the pumpkin. But 
this costume is just like Halloween nostalgia to me. So I had to include it. And then of course her little leaves and her stem had to be green. And I'll actually end up using these same colors to color in her little shoes. Um, I don't think that many parents would go buy their kid green shoes just for this, but uh, it just looked right. That's the only explanation I have. So I also gave her little black leggings and a black shirt underneath like she would just be in some sweats with her costume pulled over because at least where I'm from in the fall at Halloween time, it's usually not crazy cold, but it can get pretty chilly at night. I also decided to give her um, some like soft, dirty, blonde kind of hair. So I went in with my E40s. Um, I went 44 and then 42 and then I jumped to an E30 to make sure that this stayed pretty pale and blonde feeling. For my witch, I decided to go all black and purple except for her treat bag. Um, so I went in with my purples first starting to shade that hat band and her dress and I love the way that Amy has the ripples in the skirt drawn. I think it's very easy to tell where your shadows are supposed to go. On my hat bands, I always like to leave a little bit of a highlight right on each edge to help kind of give that rounded effect. I went in with my medium shade and started blending all of that out. And then of course I will fill in the rest of those spaces with my lightest shade. And I don't know, you could obviously use any colors for these, but I really love the Halloween kind of tertiary orange, purple, and green. I think it just screams Halloween. I'm all for kind of an un, um, uncommon or untraditional color scheme. But for Halloween, I, I think that, you know, there's nothing wrong with purple, orange, and green. So it was a pretty easy call for me with these guys with the pumpkin, the witch, and the Frankenstein. Um, I went in with my black quote unquote black combo, which is my N8, which desperately needs to be cleaned and filled. I did not realize that I didn't have an N8 refill. So that is currently in the mail on its way to me. Um, I ordered it in the middle of making this video. And then I blended that out with my N6, N4. And on the hat, I will add just the tiniest little bit of, I believe it's the N2 to the edges. Um, I didn't need it for the other parts of her tights and her boots. There just wasn't enough, uh, enough room. Oh, it was N3. I apologize. N3 was my lightest shade right on the edge of her hat. I shaded in the tiniest little sliver of skin on her neck and her hand that you can see. And then again, to bring in my traditional Halloween colors, I decided to make her a redhead and gave her some really nice orangey brown hair. Then I decided to change things up just a little bit and gave her a pink trick or treat bag. These bags kind of look to me like a more traditional pillowcase style trick or treat bag. Um, that's what we always used growing up was <laughs> pillowcases. Uh, my kids now want like super cute buckets, but they're never big enough. So I always end up carrying a backpack. And then halfway through the night, I pour their candy into the backpack so that their buckets aren't too heavy and they can keep going. For my Frankenstein, I did give him green skin. Then I started going in with that same black gray combination as the witch to start shading in the hair. And I really wanted to give that super shiny effect. Like this might be kind of like a plastic, not mask, but like a not really a wig, but more like a hat or a helmet almost. Um, so I added in some really fun shading and tried to keep a lot of contrast with that. Then I decided to make the suit gray as well. To change it up just a little bit, I did swap over from my neutrals to my cool gray markers for the suit. Again, just so that he didn't look exactly like the witch. But if you have a limited gray supply of markers, just use what you have. Um, I was just, I figured at this point, I've already used so many things for this project that I might as well just do what I felt like. Um, and then his trick-or-treat bag is going to have orange so that each one of them has orange somewhere. And that's our little close-up of our little characters. I'm going to end up fussy cutting them out um, at the end of this and edging them in black marker. I did do that off camera because this project did actually take two days. I did 
all of the coloring and prep work and stenciling and all of that in one day. And then I uh, let everything kind of dry and <laughs> sit overnight. And then I finished everything the second day. Um, total, I have about an hour and a half into this project, which really in the scheme of things isn't too crazy for me. Uh, but uh, I just love how this looks. I will definitely be adding this to one of my shelves on my bookcase this year. Um, and I'll at the end, I'll put in a picture of it kind of like styled a little bit, at least on the shelf. My husband wouldn't let me pull out all of the fall decor this weekend um, so that I could really show you. So I just pulled a few bits and bobs, but I think you'll get the idea. I colored in my uh, front stoop with the warm gray markers, again, just to change it up a little bit and added some E70 family markers to my door frame. I like that this kind of cool, um, purpley brown. I love how this ties in with the rest of the background that we're going to be making because we're going to be adding some red to those bricks that we stenciled on. Um, and I was really torn for a while about what I was going to do for this door, but I ended up just going with um, my cool grays one more time and went with kind of a white, a plain white door. So you really aren't sure when you see this if the kids should be nervous, um, but the inside of the door being so dark when we cut out this inner piece and place it on that black cardstock, it definitely gives you the idea that like it creaked open when they knocked and nobody's there. So that's probably why they're a little nervous, right? The little pumpkin, her knees are kind of buckled together. Frankenstein looks a little, a little unsure with his hands behind his back. So I just think it's so cute. Like you don't know if it's, um, you know, a little ghosty open the door or if it's just a grown up taking their sweet time or trying to mess with the kids a little bit. I ha I know plenty of grown-ups who would have no problem doing that. <laughs> so um, I shaded in all of the shadows on the door and those inner panels with my cool grays. I tried to keep it pretty light. And then I went around my whole door frame with black, the 100 black marker. I should have done this a little bit thicker. If I could do it over again, I would have made this framing just a little bit thicker on all sides and I would have trimmed my door frame out a little bit further. I didn't check this against my actual frame pieces before I started cutting so it is going to be a little bit smaller. It still looks totally fine. Just another one of those if I was going to do it again I wouldn't have cut it so close. I wanted to show you how I cut the inside of the door out. So I just started by making a hole in the middle of that white cardstock, using that to kind of cut over to one edge. And then I just go along the inner edges of that stamped image with pretty sharp scissors and fussy cut it out just like I do the outside. I know that some people um, try to do like X-Acto knife, but this was open and wide enough that I did not feel that that was necessary. X-Acto knife is not a strong suit of mine, so I try to avoid it whenever I can. I did go around all of my edges on my door frame and my little characters with a black water-based marker. I also use that same marker to color in this that frame that I created for my door. You could also definitely paint this. I just didn't want to wait for anything to dry. So I went in with that marker and you can see now when I line up my door that the frame part is going to stick out a little bit on the sides. In theory, in a perfect world, that would have been all black colored paper, but it's totally fine. It ends up working uh, anyway. So now I went in with my Lumberjack Plaid Red Oxide Ink, and I smeared that straight from the ink pad onto my brick stencil um, paste that we put on and then I went in with a brush just to kind of add color here and there and make sure that there wasn't just like a giant splotch of ink sitting anywhere that would kind of smear. I glued down my door with some tacky craft glue something heavier duty and then I had bought this moss from Michaels and I ended up taking out just a little bit and tearing it up and going in with that same tacky craft glue 
and adding it on either side of the door and then to help hold it in place I'm gonna flip over two of my Distress Oxide ink pads and lay them on top and just let them sit overnight. So this was at the point where I was like, okay, let's let our ink dry, let's let our glue dry, and I will come back to this with fresh eyes tomorrow. So here you can see me putting on my weights. And then flash forward, now we're at the next day, everything is adhered in place. I fussy cut out the kids and edged them in marker and I also made these two colored up these two little pumpkins from this previously released set the I think it's like carve out some fun stamp set I shaded those in because I felt like the bottom just still looked a little empty I had decided at this point I was gonna put my sentiment at the top instead of the bottom and then I took some of the leftover frame pieces and kind of doubled them up and glued them to each other and gave those a couple minutes to dry and that's what we're going to use here to pop up our pumpkins and our trick-or-treaters just those leftover little bits and I love that this whole project is like all of these things are from the part that you're technically supposed to throw away so like I still have all of those tiles that I can create with forever um, and now I saved the frame bits from going in the trash so I added one single layer to the top of my doorway to help hold my sentiment I added um, single layers to where the pumpkin and the Frankenstein are gonna go and I added a double layer for both pumpkin jack-o-lanterns and the witch then I wanted that to dry for a couple minutes so I switched it up and I heat embossed my sentiment I went in with the caramel latte glitter embossing powder from pink and Maine, which is absolutely stunning I love that it's warm and orangey, but it's not super bright and in your face because the house does kind of give that worn feeling. Here it looks really orange, but once you heat it up, it definitely takes on a completely different vibe. Um, so I just, you can see like as it melts, how that orange kind of fades to the back and you get more of like a coppery look and it's so shiny so i'm gonna go in with my wire paper trimmer and trim that down um, a little bit from either side as well as from the top so that it fits right over that door frame some of the wooden part is going to be covered up but that does not bother me i'll everything at this point i'm adhering with that tacky glue because i really just want to make sure that it stays put as long as possible um, I'm okay with only getting a couple years out of this as a decor piece, uh, but I definitely, you know, the longer it could last, the better. So now I popped in my little trick-or-treaters and I just love the dimension that you get from this type of little decor sign. I'm going to end up just leaning it against some other stuff on my bookshelf, but you could definitely add a little backer or like one of those little hang tags at the top and hang it on a wall. You could also do the same kind of concept uh, flat onto a card base, whatever makes you happy. I just really wanted to inspire you to think outside the box and play with these amazing new stamp sets, however makes your heart happy.